Hi, welcome to Digital Intro. It's a new approach to teaching where introductory courses are transformed into active project-based experiences. Projects are carefully designed to expose students to a wide range of digital skills as they learn traditional disciplinary content. Within our Digital Intro to Psychology course, you can explore concepts and content in the field of psychology through video storytelling, programming, data visualization, web development, design, and more. This novel approach solidifies new content knowledge, exposes you to modern digital tools, and provides you the opportunity to create tangible artifacts of your learning. I had really good grades, you know, but I was memorizing things for exams and after the exams I would forget everything. So I didn't really feel like I was learning anything for myself. I was just memorizing stuff for the test. This course with Professor Durker and working on these projects, it really felt like I was learning something that I could keep for myself and for the years to come and something that I would not forget. That's something that's cool about doing your own project is because you get to choose what you're interested in and then ask all those questions, discover, of them, discover the answers to them, and then put them together. It's being able to ask questions and go on my own journey of curiosity. To free up valuable class time for collaborative work, we needed to flip the classroom and provide relevant, compelling, shareable content traditionally covered during in-class lectures as digital lessons that can be viewed outside of class. And what better approach than to have students create these digital lessons? We started with a video focusing on the brain and behavior. The script originally had four sections. I picked a section of the different parts of the brain. I was trying to walk the viewers through the different parts of the brain and their functions. We start editing, we start bringing together found footage or archival footage and our own animation and we kind of make this multimedia product that comes together. My section was on neurotransmitters and chemicals within the brain. Neurotransmitters from this presynaptic neuron are taken up, that is, bind to specific receptor sites on dendrites of nearby neurons. So I did a lot of animation using Adobe After Effects, so basically doing two-dimensional motion graphics. So I was animating kind of neurotransmitters passing between the synapses and the effects of drugs on the brain. First video, I did the electrical section, uh, and I was uh, drawing out the dendrites going into the soma, the cell body, and then through the axon, and showing how the different ions going in and out allow the electricity to travel through. In most neurons, the dendrites are heavily branched. The cell body contains the neuron's nucleus and all the elements needed for normal metabolic activities of these cells. It's very much an environment in which you can come with whatever skills you do have and you learn from other students who might know something you don't and you help each other in that sense. So I was able to help with motion graphics. Angelic was able to film some parts for me. Um, Lauda just had lots of experience. She was able to help us with like general filmmaking. I was an editor and illustrator we basically come in with any skills that we have, so I also did some cinematography. I learned animation for it, I drew some neurotransmitters, and I also learned how to use Premiere Pro more. Harrison actually kind of came in and helped me learn Adobe After Effects, so I learned the program. It was kind of a baptism by fire situation, and I just had to learn the skills really quickly so I could achieve that goal. Having a goal in mind can actually kind of drive you to learn really fast and really effectively. One of the best ways to learn something, of course, is to teach it. Teaching in the context of learning provides a meaningful opportunity to identify confusions and gaps and to receive feedback that further enhances learning. I mean, the goal is not just to learn the material, but to sort of engage with it in a way where you're thinking about how you might teach it for that particular project. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, theories su suggesting that until you teach something, you don't really know it. And so with the Brain and Behavior Project, that's sort of what we're trying to get at. I think I retain knowledge a lot better when it's kind of learned through doing, when you're kind of acting out your knowledge. A project-based approach is really effective for me because I'm, I'm not just learning kind of passively, I'm, I'm very actively 
kind of getting information and I'm um, using that information to create a product. When I'm able to explain an idea to somebody and make them understand, that's when I fully understand that idea. So with this model, you're training people to learn how to teach, and by doing that, they're learning too. It's the cerebral cortex that receives the most careful consideration and study among behavioral neuroscientists. In fact, the cortex is involved in every thought and perception, as well as our ability to produce and understand language, and to construct and experience emotion. Being able to talk to different people and discuss different strategies for presenting the information and, and kind of critiquing each other's work, that's a really universal skill. In the class, we were always told to help each other when we can, and we would be showing the projects on the screen, and I would be like, wow, like how did he think of doing that? Or how did she like design that? And I would reach out to whoever it was, ask them about how they did it. The goal is learning through the creation of stunning acts of communication, an idea that's both aspirational and we believe wholly achievable. And being able to produce something that you can show others or can be seen by other people gives everything you're doing more meaning. It makes it stick with me for a longer time. Even more than introducing you to a discipline, Digital Intro creates opportunities to learn leading digital tools and software platforms that empower you to enter the digital workforce. I mean, that's how life is after, after college. You're not going to be in a classroom listening to your boss talking and then having to do something. No, you're going to have to collaborate with people. You're going to have to create something with people. Someone who has learned entirely through memorizing and taking notes and listening is going to be a breathing and moving textbook. Um, but if someone has integrated knowledge and someone has been using their curiosity and their other skills and putting them together the whole time, you're gonna get someone who brings things to the table that you might not have even expected. It empowers students into getting up, getting out of their, their chairs, <laughs> out of those lecture halls and making something. At the end, it's worth it.